What's going on everybody? This is Ritz from Torst Woodworks. Uh, this weekend's project is a small and a medium uh, flag. I'm going to show you the proper widths of your stripes, your unions. I use a separate union, so in this video I'm going to show you how to put it together uh, with a separate union. I'm going to also show you how to do it without a CNC machine. Even though I have a CNC machine, I'm going to show you how to use a stencil and a Dremel so that anybody, whether you have a machine or not, can do it. So let's get at it. All right, so today what I'm working on, I wanted to make a video. Uh, I'm working on a medium flag and a small flag. Um, now since I have a CNC machine, I do my unions with the CNC machine. I will show you how to do it if you don't have a CNC machine. Um, the way I do it is a separate union. So um, let's, say, let's say you're just making a medium flag, which is right here. Now the medium flag is a 37 inch by 19 and a half inch flag. Those strips are 1.5 inches. Um, and now in order to do that, you would need three of the one by 12s and four foot lengths from Home Depot. Uh, that, would get, that will get you your stripes for your long stripes, your short stripes, your backers, and your unions. That will get all, everything you need, plus you'll have some left over for another project for your medium. So for the medium, you'll need three of these. Um, that'll also include your union uh, for it as well. Now for the small flag, the small flag is a 24 inch by 13 inch flag with one inch stripes. Um, you can you can get you can get pretty much all the stripes out of one of them, but for the backers in the union, you'll need more wood. So usually I just get two, and then I have a lot left over. So you'll need two of those uh, for a small flag. Um, the union for, and I'll have this all, all, all down in the description so you, so you don't have to remember right off the top of your head, but the union for the small, I believe, is a 10 inch by 7 inch um, union. So that means your, the small stripes of your flag need to be 14 inches. Your long stripes are, since it's a 24 inch flag, obviously have to be 24 inches. And your braces for the back of your flag, since it's a 13 inch tall flag need to be 13 inches for the medium the unions the union is I believe I know it's 15 inches and I think it's by 10.75 inches and so your long stripes obviously have to be 37 inches short stripes have to be actually short stripes right there short stripes have to be 22 inches and the back braces have to be obviously 19 and a half so that is the way to cut them up I'm not going to show you ripping because I already got them ready but I get them out of these. So out of these two flags, if you want to make a small and a medium flag, you will go and get five of these. They are, right now at my Home Depot, they're like $7 and change. Um, now normally, if you want the best rates, if you're buying in bulk and making a lot of flags, you, uh, you can go to Lumberyard. That's usually where I go, but since I'm only making two today, um, I just went to Home Depot because I get them in 16 foot lengths for around $28. But for sake of e you know, easement, if you're just doing this for the first time and only making it for yourself, I would just go to Home Depot, pick up, if you just want to do one medium, pick up three. If you want to do just one small, pick up two. Or if you want to do both, pick up five. So all right, next thing I'm going to do with it is I'm going to torch all these stripes and I'll kind of show you the difference that I do between the red stripes and the uh, natural, which are which would be the white stripes on a flag. I want to show you the grains that I pick for each. Uh, to me, that gives you the best uh, best looking flag. All right, so let me go ahead and start torching these. It's pretty simple. I use one of those blue torches, plumber's torches. I don't know if you can see it over there. Got to excuse my mess. Um, to torch the flag, there's quicker ways. That's just the way I enjoy doing it. I have more control. To me, um, and then once I torch it, uh, we'll go on to the next step. All right. All right. Just to show you guys, um, this is the uh, union for a medium flag. Uh, it's 15 inches by, like I said, I think it's 10.79, five inches. But what I do for the medium flag, I'll show you a trick later. But what I do is I just take the one by 12, which is actually it's a one by seven, uh, 11.25 uh, normally. Um, I just take that, I cut it to 15 inch lengths and leave the excess on the top. Uh, and what I'll do later, which you'll see, is that, uh, um, 
I'll be able to match it up with the top stripe perfectly with that excess and so you have a flush union with your top stripe but anyway that's it so I'm going to torch this and then I'm going to stain it I use a water based uh, stain see if I can reach it yeah. so I use a water based stain um, get that at Lowe's it's uh, the color is true blue I'll torch it and then I'll stain it and then I'll get everything else ready alright so there is um, there's the union uh, torched up a trick that I want to tell you to keep it from cupping um, is I've read where whatever you do to one side do to the other so if you're drawing out moisture by torching a lot of times you don't do it to the other you're drawing moisture out of one side so what's causing it it'll start to cup because of that so if you draw it out of both sides it kind of can stop it from cupping now you'll still get sometimes you'll still get a little bit of cupping um, there's ways to prevent that I'm not going to get that into that on this video but that is the quickest way that I've found that eliminates a lot of the cupping because I've had some that look like a C whenever I've been done torching it uh, if I didn't do the back side so anyway that's the that's the little tip that I got for that I'm going to stain this now um, and show you uh, kind of how I do it with a stencil that I got on Amazon all my cut list every tool I use uh, if there's a link for it I'll post it in the description uh, so you can pretty much use the description to get anything you may not have or may want um, that you see in this video um, including the CNC including the Dremel that I use um, and all that anyway so let me go ahead and stain this um, let it dry the great thing about the water base is that it is dry and ready to cut and probably I don't know you could probably do it depending on the day if it's uh, more humid it takes a little bit longer um, but today like today where it's beautiful outside there's no humidity um, it'll probably be ready to cut in about 20 minutes or yeah to carve in about 20 minutes um, so anyway let me get that done and I'll be back all right so I don't know if you can see it because the lighting is kind of crap but uh, this is the torch that I use you can get this whole kit <clears throat> for $15 at Walmart and then these blue um, propane tanks are only three dollars and change when you need a refill sorry my hands are shaking like crazy right now um, but anyway so that's that's all that is and then we are going to start um, torching it I'll kind of try to do this one-handed to see if I can uh, kind of show you the way I do it I just the main thing is to stay steady and I already burnt that end that's okay to stay steady all the way through and if you need to come back and touch something up you can come back and do it but you don't want to stop because what it's going to do if you stop you're going to get these big black dots so you want to maintain the same pace all the way across and i'm sure i'm butchering this video right now um all the way across and kind of then come back and touch up like i like hitting these sections a little bit more to show the cool I can't even really see it because I'm like looking right into the sun kind of uh, anyway that's the way I do it um, then I go ahead I turn it over and I torch um, the sides right here too just to, so that it doesn't uh, so if, if any any edges pop up you don't really see it that well so I torch these edges as well And sorry for the shaky video. Alright, that's got all that. Kind of hard because it like wants to zoom in too. So anyway, so let me get the rest of these done. I'm gonna show you a difference between once I'm done, I'm gonna show you a difference between what I use for the red stripes and what I use for the natural stripes. Okay, wanted to show you kind of what I was talking about uh, with what I use for my natural stripes and what I use for my red stripes. So when you get a 1x12 um, and you are cutting out your long, um, your long sections, you'll get seven pieces uh, for a 1.5 um, inch stripe. Uh, in the center of the board, usually you have these really nice wavy grains. Sometimes they're different depending on what knot you have. And on the outside of the board, towards the edges, you have these really tight grains. The really tight grains, which are like this right here, to me, um, I use those for the reds. Because um, they're nothing really special. 
Uh, the red's going to bring out some detail with it, but by itself, um, it's nothing really great. Now, the center of the board, usually you get these pretty cool, wavy. I still need to touch up this one a little bit. But these really cool looking grains that look really good naturally by themselves. They don't need anything else to uh, bring out any detail. These are the ones I use for my natural strikes. Um, give it a really cool look um, and sets it apart. That's just a quick tip. I'm going to go ahead and stain these. Um, get the get, actually I got to I got to torch the the shorter stripes first and then I'm going to stain them and then we'll go over what we need to do with the union. All right guys, so I got the the red stripes um, stained. I use the same brand water-based stain. Um, color is scarlet for this. Um, so you can kind of see how I do it. That's why I like the separate union because it is so much easier to just stain that union blue, stain that red. Don't have to use a razor blade, don't have to use tape or anything like that. Um, so that's the way I like to do it. So what I'm gonna do real quick is show you um, how I carve it with a stencil. I'm not actually gonna carve it, but I'm just gonna get all the way up to carving it. Show you what I use um, for my Dremel. I don't use the actual Dremel, I use a different tool. But uh, I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so the way I do it is I got a stencil that I bought off of Amazon that is made for this size. Um, now remember, because we have the excess, we don't line it up in the middle like that. We line it down at the bottom. Line at the bottom, because we're gonna cut that excess off when we line it up uh, with the, um, when it matches up to the top stripe. So I'll tape it down. Once I tape it down, I'll go ahead and use a pencil uh, to mark each star. I'll take that off. And what I use is a Wen uh, rotary tool with a flex shaft attachment with a, see if I can get it, I don't know if it'll zoom in on it or not. Let's see, no, not gonna zoom in on it probably. Anyway, it's a 107 bit. Um, some people like to, when you first start out, I suggest getting a 105, 106, and 107 uh, uh, bit. It, just because um, the 105, you can, once you take it off and you start carving it, you can carve out the outline of the star and then use the 107 to take out, uh, to carve out the rest of the star. So you kind of have uh, crisp looking stars. Um, and that's all I do for that. Uh, what I'm gonna do with this one, cause I'm kind of in a hurry, uh, cause I gotta meet a lady for a different flag. Um, I'm gonna get this thing set up on my Bob's uh, CNC machine to carve out the um, Marine logo. And then once that's, uh, once that's done, I'll show you how I put it together. All right, so, uh, I didn't record me putting together the medium um, just because I was in a rush. I had to go meet somebody for a flag. But I have the small flag ready um, to carve and to put together. So I'm gonna, it's, it's the same exact process, just smaller size. So you, you guys can see how I put it together. Um, same thing with that union. You, there's a stencil you can put on that union if you're gonna do it by hand. Um, trace out the stars, get the, uh, the um the rotary tool carve out the stars and then you put together how i put together um i have a cnc machine a bob z3 um that that i use to carve out the stars i know some people are like oh cnc machine that's not real woodworking whatever um that thing the bob z3 is great costs 700 dollars brand new customer service is amazing people who work there are amazing it's held up for me um, I've been, I've been getting orders like crazy for about almost two years now. Um, I've sold over 400 flags. I didn't get this machine until I was a little over 200 flags in. So I did hand carve for a long time and I went from making 10 flags in about a week to making 10 flags in about two days. Um, so this thing has helped me keep up with orders. Um, I'm either right at 400 flags sold or a little bit over 400 flags sold and I've only had this thing for about oh maybe eight months so it has paid for itself um, a few times over they also have the E4 which is a little bit bigger and they're coming out with two new ones 
that I believe are a three foot by three foot cutting radius and a four foot by four foot cutter, cutting radius. But right now that one works perfect. I can do the small, uh, medium, large flags uh, unions in it. So it's perfect for me. I also do custom signs, uh, so it's great. Um, but anyway, so let's go ahead and we're gonna get started. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that union. I'll take a little uh, little video of it cutting. It's gonna be a Navy union, um, just to kind of show you the process. I'm not gonna go into designing it right now. I'm gonna make some future videos for people who do have a CNC machine that wanna know how to design stuff in easel. Um, I'm gonna be doing some of that soon. Uh, I, I don't wanna lump that into this video because this is strictly about you know how to make how to make and put together a flag. All right, so let me get started on that, and I'll be back once we once the union's cut out and we're ready to assemble. All right, so we got the union all carved away overall between the two cuts. The stars, I used a 90 degree bit V bit. The logo, I used a 60 degree V bit. Uh, overall, it took about 35 minutes to carve, uh, about, about five to six minutes for the stars and the rest of the time for the logo. All right, so as you can see, like I said, I left a lot extra. At the top so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna go get uh, I'm gonna go grab my uh, my little rig I got set up to make sure my flags are square I'm gonna kind of show you that I'll show you the process of um, marking this um, Union to get it square with the uh, with the stripe and I'll show you how I do that and um, Then we'll start putting it together All right, so here's what I do. Uh, this is the rig that I made up. It's just one of those two by four sheets of the cheapest plywood you can get i think it's osb board um and just some stripes at a 90 degree angle on each side um, i need it on each side with mine because i'll show you why here in a second but anyway so here's what i do i put all the, sh the short stripes up here make sure it's nice and tight down there and i'll push i'll push on there while i mark it okay so then once it's pushed i'll make a mark then i'll go to my saw and i will uh, well, I'll, I'll take the uh, speed square make the line longer, go to my saw, cut it across, and that way I know, but you wanna make sure you're squeezing this. Sometimes I put, take a, uh, a clamp and squeeze it while I make the mark, but I don't think I have any close to me to do this while I am um, doing this video. I don't have any with hand, hands reach. Actually, there's one right there, let me grab it, hold on. All right, so that way I can kinda of do it while I'm, uh, make it a little bit bigger there we go that way i can do it while i'm making the video all right so we're squeezing these things together which what it's going to be it's how it's going to be whenever we make it we make our mark which should be just slightly above those stars right there all right so we'll make that mark i'll go over to the saw and then i'll uh cut it on the saw and then i'll bring it back here and it should be uh pretty level all right so we went over there and cut it as you can see, we got a perfect uh, perfect match with that top one. So now what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna take that off. What I do is I take these stripes, move them over here, turn them this way. I wanna burn the inside edges of all these whatever's on the inside. The reason I do that is because sometimes with wood, with wood, you're gonna get it move. It's gonna move. You're gonna get movement. And what this does 
is if it moves and a stripe comes up a little bit or the union comes up a little bit, you're just going to see black. You're not going to see pure white. And so it won't stand out as much and you really can't see it when it does it. So I do this to both this side and the bottom part. I'll flip it over as soon as I get this. Uh, flip this over. The bottom part of the union. Like I said, this ensures that you will not see any of that white at any point. Alright, there we go. Alright, so I got all that done. What I do next is I take this, and because we're flipping it backwards, I need to flip it over that way. All right, same thing with these. And it helps too, because you know the part that you burned is the part that the burnt stripes go against. So what I do is I'll flip them, burned edge against burnt edge, like that. Let's do these right here. They don't have to be perfect right now because we're just getting uh, pieces. Let me go grab. Go grab these ones right here. All right, and I'm not gonna go over which stripe goes where because it's pretty obvious. You go red, blue, I mean red, blue, red, white, red, white, red, white. Let's put a red, Let's find a white. I usually try to find the best white and save that one for last. Red. And see, to me, that one looks the coolest, so it's going to be the top white. Slide everything down, and you should. Something's hitting right there. There we go. Once everything gets clamped, because you'll have some that are just uneven, man. You'll have some that are bowed a little bit, so what you got to do is whenever you clamp it, because <clears throat> you can see right there and right there, those, those, uh, those ones are a little bit warped. So what I do is I'll clamp it up really tight. I take my hammer and I'll hammer it in. So let's get this thing clamped up and then I'll kind of show you what I mean. All right, so we got it all clamped up. Um, even about as much as I can get it even. None of these flags are perfect. Uh, I, I kind of like that because you know, it makes each one unique. Um, I tell my customers all the time is one flag is not like the other. I can make 10 Betsy Rosses and I bet you every single Betsy Ross that I make is different than the one before it because the grain pattern, the way the boards meet up together, the union and everything. But anyway, so I got it all um, kind of where I want it. With this side right there, you can kind of see how they're kind of, it's kind of weird. It's not completely even. I don't really stress about that because all I do is take it on my table slaw, slaw, uh, saw and uh, cross cut it to get a nice even a cut. I know that side right there is going to be 90 degrees because of the, the rig it's in. And this side right here will be 90 degrees once I cut it. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get our uh, braces for it. All right. I'll drop them all first. So it's not, it's not really, uh, I, now I just eyeball it just because of how long I've been doing it. I kind of know where they need to be. Uh, and I got markings also to kind of help me if I'm off a little bit. So right here, as you can see, because they're kind of burnt out, but I have where these kind of need to go because I am cutting some of that off. I kind of leave that one over a little more. Anyway, so that's kind of where my braces go. I put glue down each, uh, each brace and then I take a... Um, my brad nailer and I drive in, uh, I drive in one, one brad nail for each stripe. The union part, since it's a separate union, what I do is I drive a brad nail on this side to connect these stripes. And then I drive brad nails in on this side to connect the union and then one, 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 so forth down. Over here, I do one, 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 and then kind of uh, scatter it through here for that union. That'll connect the union to it. And so this side, since it's just stripes, get one. And this side, since it just gets stripes, 
get one uh, gets one as well. This is the uh, gun I use. It's the Ryobi Airstrike. Um, love this thing. Uh, I used to use my air compressor with a crown staple gun with it. Uh, it wasn't bad. I just hated hearing the air compressor because I only had like a three gallon air compressor so it was running all the time and loud. This thing uh, on one charge I can do about 10, 10 flags on it um, before I need to charge it again and then when it charges it's ready after I think about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours at most and then it's uh, fully charged again. Um, I got this on sale at Home Depot for I think $99. Um, can't really remember but that came with the battery and the gun. So, but anyway, let me go ahead and I'll glue these up, uh, get it, get the brad nails in it, and then I'll go cross, uh, cross cut it on my table saw. And then what I'll do after that is I'll come back and I'll show you how I frame, well, my version of framing, how I frame the flag and do my little, uh, torching to kind of, uh, give it some, uh, I don't know depth. I don't know if depth's the right word, but anyway, kind of how I how I do it. Uh, that red right there, uh, I'll sand that down and get rid of that. And this is kind of how I leave the back. I used to torch the back completely, um, including the braces, until uh, I actually had a customer. I, I mean, you can you can spray it a few times to, and this wouldn't wouldn't happen. The back, I don't like wasting a ton of spray on it. Um, but anyway, someone said uh, the brace left some soot on on their wall even though I sprayed it so I have stopped spraying I mean uh, I've stopped uh, torching the back um, I still give it a spray of poly but I don't uh, torch it anymore I only torch the union because like I said if we uh, um, if you do if you torch one side you gotta torch the back to keep it even that's how you get the nice even cuts that we were able to get but anyway so let me go ahead and get this ready and uh, I'll come back and show you how we finish this flag up. All right, so we got it. Um, got the braces on, got that glued. I cross cut it, so now we have a nice straight line on that side. We already know we have a 90 degree angle on this side. Now's the time to check to make sure you don't have any raised with your um, union. So you wanna check these boards to make sure they're even because before the glue set, um, you can hammer them in and kind of move them and, uh, and get them straight. But if you wait till the glue is cured, then you're not going to have any time and it's going to, it won't really move. So everything looks good. Um, so now what we're going to do is I've sanded everything down. I sanded the top, this at the sides, um, with 120 grit, uh, sandpaper. And the way I do it is I torch all sides to give myself like a black a, a black looking I guess you can call it a frame but um, I don't know this is the way I do it this is the way I finish the flags um, I have done it where I bring the stain to the all the way down so each stripe on the edges are red and white as well um, but just the customer response and all that they like my torching finish on the sides and you know my name is our business name is torch woodwork so i guess i need to stay true to the name anyway so what i do on the edges um i could leave it just like that but what i like to do is i'll take it and kind of hit it each one just a little bit and kind of go that way with it so it kind of gives it a little bit of a um a little bit of a i don't know um Torch fading back into natural wood. Um, oh, and then, of course, that thing dies. I need to get things to make it so it won't die. But anyway, so that's kind of what I do on the sides. I'll do that. I'll torch it on that side, that side, and that side like that. And uh, kind of that's the kind of the look we're trying to go for. Once I'm done um, with uh, with torching this, I'll take it up and spray it, and I'll show you guys a picture, and then we'll be pretty much finished with this. We got, I don't know, uh, another, I'm sorry for my mess, man. It's crazy in here. Um, got another 10, I think there's 10 over there. Yeah, 10 or 15, something like that. Um, 10 or 15 flags over there that are done. Just gotta spray them. 
Um, anyway, so, yep, so I'll finish this one up. I'll kind of show you what I do on this side. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just torching it to give it a black looking edge. But if you do it like this, you've got to make sure when you spray um, that you're spraying the edges down too because if not, they'll get soot on their hands uh, after whenever they hold it or if anybody touches it or anything like that, you'll get soot on your hands. So I'll go ahead and finish it while I'm on the video just so you can see. Same thing on this side. I uh, get it nice and black. Some some stripes are easier to get black than others. If it's got any type of sap in it at all, it will not blacken up. So just get it as best you can. I try to look for wood that's light. The lighter the wood is, the less sap that's in it and less moisture that's in it. Um, but sometimes you can't help it. There's sap in this wood all the time. Let's finish this. Alright, flip it over, do this side, same thing here, any notch you're going to have to take a little bit more time to get it. Sometimes you'll get little things like this where it goes over the edge like that. But I mean, my customers don't care. I've actually, I've had complaints that I didn't torch the flag enough. Um, so they're looking for torch, um, torching on mine. Um, anyway, so that's, that's how it looks before it's sprayed. I'll take a picture once it's sprayed. Uh, like I said, guys and gals, it's easy. Um, I've sold over... I, I lost count around 350, but I, I think I'm somewhere right around 400 now. Um, maybe a little bit over 400. Definitely after the Christmas season, I'll be way over 400. But this CNC machine helps. You can do it with your hand. You can do it with very simple tools uh, starting out. If you don't have a table saw to rip it, you can go buy wood uh, furring strips that are inch and a half to make um, the medium sized flags. And then you can just cut it to length and if you don't even have a chop saw you can go home depot will cut them to length for you um and then all it takes is just stain and a way to you can use a hammer and nails to put it together um it's really simple it's a really fun build i still enjoy it um uh, making these flags the stories i hear from my customers of who these flags are going to are pretty amazing um we have flags all over the place we have one in the uh, United States Embassy in Thailand. We have some in uh, all over Canada. Uh, one in Mexico, one in Israel. Uh, and we're actually going to be having one in Germany. I'm shipping out uh, next weekend. So, like I said, it's, a, it's an opportunity to make some side money. Or it's an opportunity just to you know hang a flag in your house. That, to me, looks amazing. Everybody should have a flag in their house. Um... If you got any questions, please let me know. I'm going to be making a bunch more videos. Um, it's the holiday season, so I'm crazy busy, but I'm going to try to work in some videos. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button um, and leave a comment and let me know what you think. If there's any tips, like I said, even though I've made a lot of these, I'm still not perfect. Um, I'm still learning every day with these, so if you see anything maybe I can improve on besides my crappy uh, camera skills, my shaky hands, um, just let me know. Uh, I did change the battery in my fire alarm, so that is not chirping anymore. Um, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right, there she is all sprayed up. Uh, I used the $4.24 Krylon Color Master Gloss uh, Crystal Clear. It is basically polyurethane in a can, um, except it's $4 cheaper than the actual 
uh, polyurethane that you get back in the polyurethane section. So get the same amount of uh, shine on it. It takes about six or seven coats, but it dries within about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so I can get about six coats on there and a little over an hour. But anyway, there she is all prettied up and she'll be ready to, I could actually ship her neck tomorrow because it'll be dry enough. Anyway, there she is.